So as we move on to chapter seven, chapter seven is um, actually a kind of a document in itself. So it is called uh, Temporal Dynamic of the Human Mind. Uh, Psyche is the actual dissertation uh, minus uh, the evidence that I need uh, training and uh, funding accessibility to actually conduct. Um, that has to come after uh, formal education. Um, so I will actually skip ahead just to the conclusion and make some closing remarks and then film a separate video um, because the section that I was going to read at this point is, uh, is actually very lengthy. Uh, it's about 12 to 15 pages, so it'll probably be about a 30 minute to half an hour or to uh, half an hour to a one hour video. I will give a quick rundown though of what is explained in chapter seven. So there's an introduction that just sort of lists how I've structured the model itself. Um, the basic outline gives a little, uh, a little introduction into what we get into. And it's essentially um, an algorithm that has been developed to classify different cycles. Um, that's something I will uh, broach on in the future uh, with if these videos are successful in helping some people understand and uh, they want, uh, want more of it. Um, <clears throat> but the idea is there's different levels and different time frames for different cycles. Chemical is one, Biological is another, physiological is one, spiritual, um, I, I, would, I would even say there's a sentient cycle that exists probably out beyond the reach of our universe. Um, these are all based on the orbit of the planet around the sun, the moon around the planet, and the turning of the earth itself. So to simplify things, we're looking at a 28 day cycle a three month cycle and a one year cycle. There's also a three year cycle that I've included. Um, that's because when we look at the overall picture of how a lifespan actually um, comes to complete fruition and manifestation, we start with kind of three years. We exponentially grow that then we exponentially grow it again ultimately we don't reach the ideal very often so the oldest people in the world are in the early um, early hundreds if uh, if not a, a little bit older um, so there I think there remains room within our DNA structure and that might be the telomeres to actually grow and expand the, uh, the life cycle. So uh, in consideration of all of this, we have three simple diagrams that were actually done in a basic bitmapping program. Here's the first one showing three cycles throughout the life. Then we have the breakdown into what the subdivided structures actually look like over a lifespan. And last but not least, we have the temporal model that includes all three kind of laid out with the 28 days, the three years, and uh, the 108 years. Uh, uh, sorry, three years, 36 years, and 108 years. To break it down a little bit, within the three-year cycle, um, we have a, a kind of a complete representation. Beyond that, we have a greater intellect, if you want to call it that, intelligence, um, a mode of awareness could be a, a term that, that, uh, that could be used to describe it. Um, but in general, we could, we could look at things in a three-year cycle. So three years total, 
three years per part, and then three years per uh, smaller section. And as such, it demonstrates like what happens with DNA. DNA starts long and shortens. With our life, it seems to be reflective of the DNA, so it starts off really compact, builds out, and then builds out again. So we have the subconstructs. I can just list them uh, without getting into the actual descriptions of them because they are very in depth and uh, they will take a long time to read through. So we have conception, we have perception, we have expression, integration, action, reflection, inception, variant states, formation, comparison of self-life, and contrastation of will-mind. So, with all this in consideration, we can develop something more from it that relates to uh, familiar concepts. So, taking the rationale of a scientific approach doesn't always work for everyone. Some people don't believe in evolution. Some people don't believe in adaptation. Some people think that we only exist as one form of human being. We've never existed in any other form. I think that's okay. Uh, I mean, uh, metaphysically speaking, it's your choice to believe what you're going to believe or it's not. You're simply made to believe a certain way. Um, but what I've done is I've created this. And I will read this part of, of it off. We have, da, 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 let's get this centered up here. And what I'll do is I'll just kind of run it by the camera. Hopefully. So I've come up with three additional models that kind of help explain this idea in different ways. First is based off the cycle of um, grief or acceptance or death. Um, uh, I think it was Kubler and Ross. Um, it's very, very simple. We go through acceptance. We have grief. We bargain. There's denial. There's doubt. There's pity, there's anger. I think all this is based off of a personality construct. We then go through regret, reality, remorse, things that are greater concepts that are built upon the basic reactive emotional expression. Relativity, it's something we exist, we kind of come to realize that as we get older, that it's not about simply doing what we want and getting away with it. There's more to life than that. We can, uh, we can influence things for the better. We can accomplish while we respect other people. These are concepts that come into fruition in our later years. Some people say they take the fight out of us. Uh, I mean, once you pass a certain age, I'm sure there's uh, a lot less want to fight against what is going to occur naturally. Then we have manifestation, consequence, eventuality, and actuality. So this model is based on that idea that there's different stages surrounding our mortality and our morbidity. It's a little more developed and it doesn't actually specifically mean that it goes in this order. I put it on, uh, on a wheel and say that at certain points, um, we have the seven underlying parts, we have a basis on top, and then relativity, and then there's almost a reflection that comes up off of it. I, uh, I have been experimenting with AI and trying to get AI to create the right kind of model to reflect that. Um, I may work with Blender, uh, it's a software that, uh, that helps do 3D design, do the spherical shape with the different parts in it, projects to come. 
second model is one that incorporates all psychological coping mechanisms, compensation, fantasy, identification, intellectualization, rationalization, isolation, projection, regression, reaction formation, repression, sublimation, avoidance, aversivity or aversivity, aggression, and acquiescence. So with this, I guess when it comes to psychology, what do we do with it? If we come to a greater understanding of things, do we teach it to everybody? Do we teach select things to certain people? Um, that, that's a question of ethos. So here I'm merely presenting it so that it can be understood in a different way. And like the model itself, with the, uh, with the pyramid structure, this here if uh, if we are looking at building up the this would be this next stage or kind of building into some formation which would I guess be the conclusion of the article and then above that is what comes down from above or what we rise up to and maybe it's a little bit of both the last are is based on the seven deadly sins so I once I wasn't raised Catholic, I was raised Presbyterian. Um, some of the ministers broached the concept of deadly sin. Um, generally, I think in Protestant Christianity, it's, uh, it's singular sin, and that's essentially choice or uh, pride if you look at it a certain way, uh, more so crime, doing, uh, doing wrong against ourselves and others, and in a state that is wrong for ourselves and wrong for others. Um, however, I read a book by uh, Anthony Hecht, which uh, it, uh, was a compilation of uh, poetry. It had the seven deadly sins in there, and I was quite fascinated by it. So I investigated a little bit, and I expanded the model to have 15 deadly sins. Uh, vanity, rage, love, avarice, hate, sloth, and gluttony. And as a note, I don't mean love, as in being, um, as love itself being a bad thing. I mean it as the wrong kind of love, which can occur sometimes, where you think you're doing something out of love, and it turns out to be done out of hate. The other way, too, when we look at hate, you can hate what is wrong, but it's when you hate what is right that, uh, that makes it a sin. Uh, pride, wrath, lust, envy, greed, spite, malice, and ultimately evil. So as the model progresses to the end or progresses in a cycle, builds up into that kind of chalice shape that is, is famous and synonymous with innocence and righteousness, we build towards actuality. We build toward acquiescence where we return to our humble, meek state. And finally, we can build into evil. Ultimately, if we committed all those wrongs, that's what we'd end up with. So, the rest of the, the chapter goes through just explaining uh, the deadly sins, coping strategies, and then we come to the conclusion. And I'm sure some people are quite happy to be at this point. And uh, I'm a little bit happy myself because it's getting on 1.30 in the morning and uh, it's been a, a busy week. I just finished moving. So um, that also explains for those of you that are familiar with me from London, Ontario, I moved about half an hour south of there. Conclusion. As we seek transcendental substantiation of the human form, we encounter a variety of challenges to our own direction as chosen through the experiences of advanced sentient embodiment. Our psyche has developed to follow the physical function of our mortal body, yet retains the characteristics of being evolved beyond simple cause and effect or the give and take of daily life. 
deploying a modality that considers both the dynamic of a stage and state structure and the dimensional aspects of a fluid and transient type phenomenology or phenomenology creates an accessibility mechanism that can assist in promoting advancement of the dominant entity. This assertion is a primary action of human adaptation and the evolution has caused an affectation type influence which needs to be considered. This model, that of the temporal dynamic of the human mind, is a means to develop and enhance awareness. So thank you very much for those of you that made it through and uh, I appreciate all the viewers. I will continue to work on getting um, some more information out there for people. Um, as a final note, <coughs> I would like to say that some of this information has been used in uh, different fields already as of this point particularly in um, AI language model generation, in uh, prediction modalities, um, made from everything from finance to forensics. And uh, last but not least, I still remain unaccomplished. Um, actually told on a constant basis that I'm delusional about my abilities. I would tend to disagree on the basis of what I presented to you. So this doubles as, as part of a uh, um, means to make sure that the information that I'm developing reaches people who are going to use it in the right way. I'm heavily involved in Web3 and I think that uh, the social media sphere and all the connections that we're making uh, to create a global humanity and a community of caring and considerate individuals is something that I really, really enjoy being a part of and I think most people would seek and like to be a part of that as well. So hopefully the information that I've shared will help towards that endeavor. So be well, stay safe, take care, much love.